Hi, I'm Fabian with Sunbelt Transmission, so thanks for stopping by today. We produce all these videos for you guys to teach as much as we can about transmissions, so if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe, push the button below, and here's your video. Thanks for stopping by today. It fits, they use this in the Nissan, the Mitsubishi, the Suzuki, and some of Chrysler products as well, okay? So let's talk a little bit about this transmission. Um, if you notice right here in front, this is our pressure taps. This is where you would put the, your gauges on to be able to take a pressure reading of the transmission. This is our input uh, speed sensor that we have right in front. This is our park neutral switch at the top. On this side, we have our secondary uh, uh, speed sensor right here. And also, let's just, this is really important. A lot of the times, the techs have a hard time identifying these transmissions for the gear ratio. And it's really important when you're gonna switch one of these out, say you're gonna put a used unit in there, you gotta have the same gear ratio. If you don't, it will not perform correctly in the vehicle and you'll have all sorts of problems. Let me show you how you identify it. So right here at the very top, you can see that they end up putting this one number, which is the 1XF5A number, okay? That identifies the gear ratio model, and it's also on the park neutral switch, 1XF5A. So there's where you would identify this transmission, and if you look right here, since we're here, that's the reverse tap where you would put your gauge for a reverse, okay? Pretty simple uh, transmission. Let's go ahead and uh, let's tear it down. I'm going to bring my tech in, Renee. Renee, how are you doing today? Hey, how you? Okay. Uh, Renee's going to assist me in tearing down this unit, so let's go ahead and tear it down. Let's go ahead and remove the torque converter out of it first. Now I want to talk a little bit about the torque converter. This is just your typical regular torque converter, like in all other vehicles. In vehicles such as the uh, Subaru and the Honda, they don't use a torque converter in their CVTs. Nissan or Jacko chose to use a torque converter to allow smooth shifting of the transmission. So they stayed with your typical normal torque converter. Let's put this down. Okay, uh, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start disassembling. First thing we're gonna do is, uh, let's, let's take the, um, let's see if we drop it down on its side. And while we have it down, Let's go ahead and remove our speed sensors. Go ahead, Renee, remove our speed sensors. It's a good thing to remove these, these parts in the beginning. Uh, simple reason is when you're moving it around, you could damage one, trying to roll it around on the table. So go ahead and take uh, that one off. This is our secondary. And if you notice, when he took that bolt off, two washers came out, and this is really important. This gives a distance between the sensor and the exciter wheel. You gotta put those two washers back in, it's very important. Let's go ahead and remove our park neutral switch. Okay. All right. Turn it around. Let's go ahead and remove our oil pan. This is the uh, JFO 11E valve body. When you go to remove this valve body, um, you need to go ahead and there's, you don't have to remove every bolt off the, off the valve body. If you remove these center ones, you're disassembling the valve body. So basically, you're removing all the external uh, bolts on the side. You've got two here, you've got two here, and two here, and then two here as well. If you, and as you can remove the whole unit. Okay, 
Okay, that pushing is really important. That's for the shaft, selector shaft. Make sure that you put this pushing back in. If you're not, you're gonna have a loose selector shaft. just a small pin you need to undo. Okay, let's talk a little bit about this valve body where we have it apart. Um, on this valve body, you want to go ahead and go over the components. Let me get this cable out of the way. Okay, here we have the uh, select switch TCC. We have our regular TCC apply. We have our B solenoid pressure, A pressure solenoid. We have our primary pressure switch. We have our secondary pressure switch. We have our stepper motor. We have our ratio control lever right here and valve. Um, we have our ROM and we have a temp sensor here as well. Uh, let's talk about the ROM for a minute. It's really important when you're switching transmissions or, or from one to another that you keep the ROM along with the vehicle. The ROM is married to the uh, TCM. It communicates back and forth. So it's important that you keep the original ROM in the vehicle. So if you were to buy a used tranny, you'd have to put the ROM in the used tranny. Okay, so we to communicate better. Yeah, put this down. Okay, and at this point right now, we like to do a little due, jolly, due diligence. Um, we're going to perform an air check. Okay, and the reason we perform an air check is we want to see where the failure is on this transmission before we rebuild it. And, for, and after we're done rebuilding it, we're gonna check it again to make sure that we address the repair. So on the first one here, we're gonna go ahead and do our reverse, apply our reverse clutches. So that one's holding pretty good, okay? And then we're gonna do our forward. See, so you can see a little smoke came out. So it's that, that forward uh, piston is leaking a little bit, so we need to address that when we take it down. And then right here, this will be our secondary variator. You can see it applying here. Watch the variator. It's, it's leaking. It's not even holding, it's not even, yeah, it's, that variator is leaking pretty bad. Okay, let's see one more time. There we go. See how it barely moved this rod down the, for the ratio arm? Try it again, Renee. See, so that secondary is leaking. And then uh, it's hard to, to air check the primary. It doesn't give you a real solid spot. We tried to put a tube in there. It doesn't work. There's too many other passageways that are open. But you'd want to do that just in the beginning so you understand what you're up against when you're rebuilding this unit. So just to recap, we had a good reverse. We had a leaky forward and we had a, a leaking secondary. Let's go ahead and tear it down. Another one. Okay. Right. Let me go ahead and remove the front cover. And that should be a 14. that you can't get the socket in so you're gonna have to use a wrench to get it out the rest you can use your gun now while he's doing it, I just want to let you know that we use these bins and we keep them in order okay as we're filling them up you know, it's easier for us to reassemble later.
cover off here. Let's get this cover really quick. Uh, on this cover, what you're looking at is you're looking at differential races. You want to make sure that they're not scarred or turned blue. And then this pipe is really important. This is a, a loop feed for the differential. Just when you're tearing it apart, take it off, blow air through it, make sure that it's not clogged or, any, or, or blocked because you want to be able to lubricate these bearings. You can see the tube goes to the bearings, okay? So they lubricate the differential. Basic cover. All right, so. Hi, this is Fabian again. I hope you liked our video, and please don't forget to subscribe because the more you subscribe, the more videos I'll make. Thank you again, have a great day.